I've never suffered as much for a pair of boots as I have with my John Lofgren engineers. You know, I mean, on the one hand, they're some of the most beautiful boots I've ever seen. As far as design goes and proportions for engineer boots, I think John Lofgren does it better than anybody else. You know, second might be uh, Brian the Bootmaker from Roll Club. I think those are gorgeous too. I just think that these are almost perfect as far as an engineer goes. That being said, it, it took me like 20 minutes to get into them in the morning, in the beginning especially. They were so stiff. And if you don't remember my first video on these things, I got them and sort of panicked because I had waited for months and months and months only to think that they didn't fit. What ended up being a problem was what they call the pass-through. And this is basically when your foot is going down the shaft of the engineer boot or cowboy boot or any other laceless boot and it has to kind of pop into the section where your foot actually ends up being. And come to find out, this is actually a pretty common problem, especially in the world of cowboy boots. We're gonna get into that a little bit more later. So I've had these John Lofgrens for over a year and I sort of wanted to do a follow-up. Number one, because they're actually being reissued by Standard & Strange, only 30 pairs announced last week. The second is, I think that engineers are becoming more and more popular. So if you run into some of the problems that I ran into, here are a few ways at least to combat them, and here's a one-year review for somebody who really before this didn't wear engineer boots very often. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, the online learning community for creatives and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. Now, as you know, a lot of times on this channel, I like to dig into the construction techniques and interview people who make these things, and all of that is really just born from a curiosity on how things are made and how things are done. And the cool thing with Skillshare is that you can scroll through, I usually use my phone, and you can find a, a bunch of different classes on any number of topics, even ones that you just have a passing interest in. For example, I've been trying to hone my photography skills, and I found a class from Benjamin Heath all about portrait photography. And I use a lot of the things that I learned in that class to shoot the thumbnail for this very video. So it's really cool that you can find anything you're interested in and expand your knowledge. Or another one that I like is Productivity for Creatives, Build a System that Brings Out Your Best by Thomas Frank. And the Skillshare classes are all free of ads, so you can learn at your own pace. You can even like replay classes that you maybe want to get more out of. And even if you're an old pro, there's always something to learn. You know, it's always tremendously satisfying to do something today that you couldn't do yesterday. So the first thousand people to click the link in my description below will get a free trial to the Skillshare Premium Membership. And after the free trial, if you want to continue learning with Skillshare, you can go ahead and do that for less than 10 bucks a month, which is a small price to pay to learn something new. Anyway, back to the video. Would I spend $1,250 again on a pair of boots that didn't seem to fit and quite frankly were a pain in the ass to get on and off? Now, if you didn't see my first video on these boots, here's a quick rundown. This was called The Devil's Causeway and it was a limited edition offered from Standard & Strange by John Lofgren in a really cool, like, dark cherry, shinky horse hide. I just thought it was beautiful. It seemed to match my Himmel jacket really closely, so I was on board. So I got them, didn't think they fit, uh, ended up getting in touch with Standard & Strange. They said, go ahead and use a couple of plastic bags on your foot to help them slide into the boot. That did work, that with a long um, shoehorn but it still took a long time to get into them. It was just, it was really a pain, and it was something I had to factor into my day. I mean, if you're in a rush, or if you only have, you know, half an hour before you have to get to work, and 20 minutes of that is taken up by just putting your shoes on? No, I don't think so. That was where I was sort of left. Now, once the boots were actually on, they fit great. I mean, once you get past the pain point of sticking your foot into these boots, they're some of the most comfortable boots that I own. So I actually reached out to my buddy Gabard from Creosote Boots, kind of, I knew that he had apprenticed under a, a, a cowboy boot maker in Texas, and I wanted to see if he had any input on how to get past this pain point. Hey there, this is Gabard from Creosote Off Grid. Last week we talked about uh, the problems that a lot of guys have slipping their foot into their engineer boots and why what what is what is the uh, the problem well this is a pass line this is a, a line that is built into an engineer boot or a cowboy boot and a maker will create a slight allowance of leather spacing so that your foot when it slides into the shaft and down into the boot doesn't get hung up on the pass line area which is basically your heel getting hung up so what I learned from some guys in um, Austin, Texas, cowboy boot makers, 
uh, is to stretch that area out. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take some water and some uh, alcohol, 70-30, and spray the inside of the shaft so that it gets a bit moist in this area at the front and the back about two inches up from the heel counter. And you're going to take a broom handle or I'm using right now a uh, hammer and I've taken 80 grit, I've taken 100 grit sandpaper and smoothed and rounded this out because you don't want to um, rub through the stitch line. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to gently pull the boot down in this area over the pass line. And I'll do the front and I'll, I'll do the back. And the back area is probably your best spot to really put a little pressure on it. You can see it's bulging out a bit. You really want to kind of hold that there in about a one inch or, or one and a quarter, half inch circumference. If you can imagine a small circle. That's where you want to push. That's where you want to try to stretch this area out. This is a very common problem with cowboy boots and engineer boots. So you can see what happens. You just slide that down gently and that will push the leather out enough so that you'll get an area that your heel can pass through and down into the shaft. All right, hope that was helpful. And taking Gabard's advice, I did stretch out that pass through just a little bit and it makes getting them on and off much, much easier. I mean, it used to take me 20 minutes, as I mentioned. Now it's maybe five. I could do five minutes. That's not a problem. And I've worn these plenty. I've worn these walking around Manhattan for the day. I've worn them playing with the kids, and I've worn them when I probably should have swapped over to work boots. And honestly, they've been great. And the nice thing about these two is when your pant leg is down over them, a lot of times people just mistake them for nice, you know, like Chelsea boots or, or dress boots or something like that, because all they see is that decorated front end, that nice looking leather. They don't see the buckle and all that stuff, like I mentioned, when your pant leg is down. So they're very versatile. I've worn these into an office where I have to wear a shirt and tie. And I was expecting just a little bit of heel slip in these. After all, you don't really have the ability to like lace down these things really tight and lock your heel into that heel cup. But I actually didn't experience much at all. Definitely not enough to be bothersome. When I walk around, I, I don't feel my heel slipping at all. It's, it's a different feeling being in laceless boots. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that there's not all these layers of leather on the top of your foot where the, you know, the lacing is and all that. There's not laces and eyelets. It's very flexible and free feeling. It's a great feeling boot once you do have it on, no doubt. I don't know how many times I'm gonna say that in this video, but there you go, that's like a third or fourth time. The only discomfort that I experienced with these wasn't in the heel or any hot spots or anything like that. It was actually at the top of, oddly enough, only one of the boots. They both have this like pull tab at the top and the piece of leather folds into the inside and it's stitched and, and you know, like you would expect, right? After a little while, if my sock starts to slip down, I feel that thing really chafing against the back of my, my calf, you know? And it's odd that's only on one side, really. This isn't a deal breaker. A lot of times what I've ended up doing, especially if I'm walking a lot in these, is I'll take the top of my, my sock and I'll kind of fold it over the top. Now, it looks goofy as hell. I know, I know it does. But I also, you know, wear my pant leg down so nobody can see it. And it adds just another layer of protection because that piece of leather rubbing against the back of your leg all day can wear it pretty raw. And again, I don't know why it's only one side. I mean, is it something that could be taken care of with maybe a little bit of athletic tape or maybe a little bit of scything on the side? I don't know. But either way, it's something that I've noticed. Is it a big issue? Not really. So the big question is, would I buy these again? And the answer is, yeah, I would. I mean, I would have expected a lot more for a $1,250 boot. I would have wanted that thing to fit perfectly out the gate. But here's the thing. These are not bespoke boots. They're not made to my foot. They're made in traditional sizes. So a lot of times they try to fit the bell curve of people, the most people they possibly can with their sizing. It makes, makes sense. And actually, Gabard told me that if, if you're gonna have a bespoke boot made, this should not be an issue. Getting your foot into these should not be an issue. So, boots from guys like Gabbard or, or Brian the Bootmaker, they, they should fit you and you shouldn't have this issue and you shouldn't have to stretch them out. So, you know, that's something to consider. That being said, 
I had to go through a little bit of that, a little bit of the pain of getting them on, a little bit of the panic of thinking that they didn't fit, a little bit of the DIY having to stretch them out myself. But most of the issues were cured in the first few months with a little bit of wear and a little bit of elbow grease. And even though Standard & Strange is re-releasing these for another 30 pair run, they're still pretty rare and exclusive. So if you like that kind of thing, like I said, I like them because they match my Himmel jacket almost perfectly. It's a neat combination that's also pretty odd to find on somebody. I like that kind of thing. You may not, might not mean a damn thing to you. Which brings me to my last point, which is, would I recommend them to you? And that's a big old maybe. I mean, if the idea of owning something like this, which is beautifully designed, wonderfully executed, comfortable when you do get them on and stretch them out a little bit, which again, you may not have to. If you don't have a high instep, this might not be a problem for you at all. If that kind of thing appeals to you though, then yeah, they are worth it. Or let's say you don't want to get these. You don't want to save a little bit of scratch and you want to go with the more like run of the mill Chrome Excel John Lofgren's. You can and you save like 250 bucks. So you can get them for just over a thousand dollars, I believe. And those should stretch out much easier than horse hide. A lot of times horse hide, it just comes with the territory that it's going to be stiff. It's going to take extra break in time. That being said, some people like horse hide and they prefer it to cow hide. Which side of the fence you're on? I don't know. But either way, I got to tell you this much. When I do have these on and I'm walking around, they do give me that buzz kind of like when I look at them. And the best pieces that I own do that. I felt that same way with my MYG nail shanks. I feel that way when I put on my Himmel jacket. There are some pieces which just have a certain aura to them and it's worth every penny when you look at that piece or you feel it and you're wearing it. It just, it gives you that, that sense. And if you haven't experienced that before, I highly recommend doing it with something. It doesn't have to be this pair of engineers. It doesn't have to be boots at all. Get something that you're into at the highest level you can. I think that if you're looking for a good pair of engineer boots, casual engineer boots, I don't think you could do much better than John Lofgren. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. I wanna know what you think. Please let me know in the comment section below. Am I way off base here? Stranger things have happened. So let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.